Hello and welcome to this video. We're going to learn how to conduct your personal annual review right in Notion. Now, this video is split into three parts. First, we're going to quickly talk about why a personal annual review is such a great idea, what are the different benefits and why you should definitely do it. Second, we're going to look at the different elements of a personal annual review because regardless of where you do it, uh, there will always be the same components that are relevant. So if you want to create your own uh, personal review uh, template or structure for it, this will be a very helpful section. And then last but not least, we're going to walk through the personal annual review template that I'm sharing here with you today and I'm going to explain you the different sections and how to make the most out of it. Now, you can download the template with the link in the description and down there you will also find timestamps if you want to jump to a specific section. And yeah, that's it. So now let's dive right in. So why should you do a personal annual review? Well, first off, a lot of studies have shown that if you practice gratitude, you're actually happier. So a personal annual review is just a good opportunity to go over all the things in your life that you're grateful for and get the additional benefit of actually feeling better afterwards. Second, it is amazing to combat something that's called the end of history illusion. You might be familiar with that because uh, we all always assume somehow that who we are right now will be who we are in the future, right? But if we take a moment to think back, for example, just to last December and how we were then and how much we've changed as a person since then, it becomes very clear that most likely we will also be a very different person one year in the future. So just having this realization already helps to see, well, you will change anyway, so you might as well try to proactively influence the way in this direction and in which direction this change is going. And last but not least, it's a great opportunity to make sure that what you do on a day-to-day -day basis is actually still aligned with your goals, right? So you might realize that you've outgrown certain things that uh, were important to you in the past or like you've gotten new things that are now a priority. And unless you take occasionally the time to check in and make sure that, yes, well, I still actually work towards the things that are important to me, uh, if you don't do that, then getting more productive, you know, like getting better at all these things might just get you to the wrong place faster. So again, personal annual review, great opportunity to just check in with yourself and make sure everything is going in the direction where you want it to go. Now, how do you actually do a personal annual review? It's fairly simple, luckily. All we need is this handy personal review matrix, and then we need to make sure that we have something for each of these four quadrants. Now, the first quadrant is the one about introspection and the past. So this one is basically what you would at first also uh, connect with the personal annual review, where you sit down, you go through everything that happened in the last year, maybe ask yourself a, part, a few specific questions, and just yeah, try to uh, figure out how did last year go. Now, the important part is then to not just stop there, because I mean, this is nice, right? Remembering what happened is good, that already will help you like to practice gratitude but we also want to learn from these things. So the second part is then to move on to the past and action quadrant, where we go again through these things that we just uncovered about the last year and then try to figure out, okay, what can we learn from that? Now, with these uh, two things, right, like the last year in review and our learnings from the last year, we can move on to the third quadrant, the one introspection about the future. This one is also often called future casting and it's where you uh, take some time to actually figure out, well, how would you like your life to be one year from now, right? It's a lot easier to figure out what you need to do and what your goals should be and what actions you should take towards them if you have a better idea of the direction. So taking just a few moments to figure out, okay, how does my ideal day look a year from now? What will I have accomplished if everything goes to plan? Taking a few moments to uh, do this introspection as well will be very helpful and set you up for the fourth part of the matrix, the future plus action one. This is where we A, set goals, and then very, very, very important, B, also think specifically, okay, how are we going to achieve these goals? And it's in particular the second step that often trips people up because we set all these goals, right? On New Year's, we have all that energy and we have like, yeah, this is what we're going to do. But then we fail with the implementation. And again, studies have shown if you take the time to think very specifically and very in very precise steps, okay, this and this is what I have to do in order to achieve this goal, then your chances of actually following through increase dramatically. So that's how we do it. And this is also how the template is structured. So now let's dive right into the template 
and see how we can do all of this in Notion. So this is the first page of the annual review template. Again, reminder, the link for it is in the description. On this first page, there's just a little bit of introduction. We have the annual review matrix again, a few more reasons of why this is such a good idea to do. And then we have the, are you ready for the yearly review checklist? Just to make sure that you have enough time, right? And that you've gathered everything because really the, the goal is to have a bit of uninterrupted time to do all of this. You can of course take a few sessions and do it in like two or three goes, but try to uh, yeah keep them to like a, a lower number. Ideally do it in one session just to make sure that everything is fresh and you can really uh, draw from the previous steps when you continue. And then when you're ready, you can click on this button that will bring you into the first page. The first page, as you already know, is about introspection about the past, which means that we're going to first figure out what happened in 2022, then we're going to practice gratitude, and last but not least, we're going to answer a few questions about the year. Now, one great tip for this uh, first section where you just try to remember, well, what happened uh, is to take out your phone and go through the pictures that you've taken. Personally, I always have a lot of trouble remembering these things and it takes a bit of time for them to come back. So if you have photos uh, ready to just anchor your memory, that's a great tip here. This exercise is also particularly good if you, uh, like me, have the feeling that time is just flying by, right? And you always feel like, well, okay, 2022 is already over, so crazy. What act like It feels like nothing really uh, happened in this year for me personally. And then you go back and look at all these months, all the things that you did, all the celebrations that you had, and it's just amazing. Now, the second tip would be to not just uh, focus here on professional wins, but also really on the personal things. Like, when did you meet with friends? Like, it can be very mundane, the things that you write down here, right? This is for you, this is for you to revisit 2022. And more often than not, it's like these personal things, like the, the dinner party with friends or going uh, on a weekend trip that, uh, yeah, make the better memories than having that specific professional win. Now, after the section, we have the gratitude section, where, again, you just wanna write down who you're grateful for, experiences, accomplishments, and really, uh, yeah, take a moment again to think back and remember like this was good because again, good feelings are often fleeting, right? We are ecstatic in the moment and the next day they're already forgotten. So take the time to revisit them and be happy a second time. And then last but not least, we have a few deeper introspection questions. And again, I would encourage you, you don't have to answer all of them, right? If something doesn't feel right, you can of course skip it. Although oftentimes that feeling that you get that like, uh, I'm not sure whether I wanna answer this or when you notice a bit of friction, that might mean that answering this question might be particularly helpful because there's something more to it. But yes, uh, again, if you don't wanna do all of them, skip a few, but I think this is a really good collection to make sure that you think about the different things and set yourself up for the next steps in this template. And once you're done with all of them, or the ones that you want to answer, you can click on this button to go to the next step, learning from the past. So far, you might have asked yourself, well, this is all nice, but why should I do this in Notion? Well, of course you can do it with pen and paper, but the advantage of doing it in Notion is that, uh, as you will see now, that you can see your previous answers and really draw from them for the next steps, which is a lot easier than if you have to always continuously go back to the previous pages, and even better, if you use this template next year again, and the year after that, and the year after that, it will just become this treasure trove of personal reflection where you can really see your journey through the years. So that's again why it's built in Notion in databases and that just makes it a lot more powerful. Now on this page, we're going to try to learn from the past, which is why we have again, a range of questions on the left side and on the right side, it will show us our answers from the previous page. So really we can just uh, further drill down and make sure, well, how can we keep our good habits? How can we <laughs> get rid of the bad ones? And so on and so on. And this will be a helpful exercise for uh, the first future casting one because based on what you've learned from the past, you might wanna change your goals uh, for the future. So again, nothing too complicated here. Go through it, uh, answer them on the left, uh, you'll see your answers on the right. And then when you're ready uh, at the very bottom, you can again click into the next part. Time for step three, future casting. Now, if you're like me, then you might have a lot of trouble if someone tells you to just close your eyes and imagine how you want your life to look one year from now. I find it super hard, which is why on this page, we're going to do this exercise a little bit different. What we're going to do is we're going to write a letter 
uh, from our future self. So uh, we're going to click on this button and that uh, gives us this uh, letter to myself. And then we open it and we see we have a template like dear. So I would put my name in here, dear Matthias. What an amazing year we just had 2023. That's the next year was incredible. And then we write uh, as if we uh, like our future us, the one one year ago uh, from uh, one year from now would write to today us a letter explaining all the things that happened, celebrating all the wins, uh, what uh, things they had to overcome and so on and so on. And to make this even easier, uh, you have on the side here first your lessons from the last year, right? So you might want to uh, keep these lessons in mind when you plan out how the ideal 2023 uh, should have gone. And then you have uh, a list of inspiration exercises that are great, right? So, um, for example, if you <laughs> have trouble starting this letter, well, just start with what would make next year absolutely epic and amazing. What are things uh, that you will hopefully do next year that would make you proud after this time? What are some obstacles on the way that you have to overcome? Take these things into account and then, yeah, write a letter to yourself. It's a great exercise. And in particular, if you have usually problems with these sort of visualization things, I feel like this is a great place to start. And when you're done, I want you to look at this letter and figure out, well, what are three words that really capture what next year should be about? And this is helpful as these uh, yeah, small intentions, instead of trying to figure out your values that might shift or everyone has pretty much the same ones. Instead, try to identify well, which three words stand for next year. And then uh, whenever you have to face a question uh, in 2023, you can come back to these three words and just think, well, does it actually align with what I set out to do? And when you're ready, click here to plan your next year. At this point, we're nearly done. All we need to do is bring it all together. So our reflections uh, of 2022, what we learned from it, and then how we imagine or hope that 2023 will go. All these things will now inform the three goals that we are going to pick for 2023. I would recommend to keep it to three. It can be very tempting to get like 10, 15 goals, but the more you get, the less likely it is that you can actually focus really on them. So I would pick maximum number of three goals. Again, you have uh, some structures, some like areas, right, where you could uh, set yourself a goal. And then on the right, you see your inspiration for these goals, right? You see the letter that you wrote, uh, the things that you learned and your intentions. And that's only the first part. And I would say even the less important part, because what's a lot more important than setting a goal is to figure out, well, how can you make that goal reality? And in order to do that, I've created this action incubator down here, which will guide you through a series of questions to help you really think through uh, how doing or achieving this goal would look like. And again, studies have shown that like this makes it a lot more likely for you to actually do these things. And it will really stack the deck in your favor, right? It will make sure that when you start into 2023, you have a plan, you know why you want to do it, and then you can set out and yeah, make 2023 amazing and achieve all these goals. And then you're done. All you can do now is click on the last page, see your overview, have everything again in one space, your goals, your intentions, the letter. So you have like this one page where you see everything about your personal annual review. And yeah, you're ready to make 2023 your best year yet. And that's it for this video. Now you know how to do your personal annual review in Notion. Again, the link to the template is in the description together with a few more Notion resources if you're interested. If you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you have anything to add to uh, this template or want to share your experiences or your intentions and goals, please leave a comment below. I would love to see what you're up to in 2023. So, that's everything in this video. Now, if you want to learn more about Notion and these sort of things and also want to continue in 2023, then definitely subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the next video.